Hey motorcycle people, let's change some brake pads. It's a fairly straightforward job with a few minor hiccups as you'll see. Here are the tools. A fresh set of brake pads, link below. Small pry bar for my license plate bracket. Copper based grease, silicone based grease, a hammer, needle nose pliers, a punch, small wire cutters for zip ties, six millimeter hex, ratchet, and torque wrench. So my setup is just a little different from stock. I'm using this license plate bracket that uses the threads for the stock Torx bolts, but the rest of the procedure should be the same. You won't need a bike stand for this or need to remove the wheel, just your bike's side stand. Start by removing the R clip from the pad pin. I'm using a pair of needle nose pliers. Just grab it, pull it up, and then will partially drive the pin out using a punch and a hammer. Now, caution here, don't operate the rear brake while you're performing uh, this brake pad change procedure. What happens is you'll push the caliper pistons in and then it's gonna be pretty difficult to push them back in, but not impossible. Just save yourself the trouble and don't touch the rear brakes. So I'm unscrewing the caliper mounting bolts. Mine are a six millimeter hex. Yours will likely be the, the Torx. So once you've got the bolts removed, you'll then want to lift up and slide the caliper off the disc. For my bike, I'll have to temporarily remove the license plate bracket first. Then you can lift up on the caliper and it will come off of the disc. Once you've got the caliper off, withdraw the pad pin and remove the brake pads. Mine are pretty worn. The rear brake pads tend to wear out fairly quickly. This is already my third time replacing them. Now that we have the caliper off, I'm going to clean it up with some soapy water and a rag. I'm hesitant to use brake cleaner as there's the possibility that it could remove paint accidentally. The pad spring can also come out for a cleaning. I'm going to pull the caliper and bracket apart and wipe everything down as best as I can. Visually inspect all the rubber components as well and check for rips, cracks and where and while I'm cleaning this up I just want to touch on why I make some of these videos I learned how to wrench on BMWs on my first bike a 1978 R100 7 and I felt like I had such an intimate relationship with that bike having taken it fully apart cleaned everything reassembled it rebuilt it back to a cafe and I want other people to have that same kind of relationship with their machines because when you have taken it apart and worked on it, you'll know intuitively when something is wrong with the bike. And just being, having the bike be kind of an extension of yourself is such a great feeling to have when you ride. It makes you feel safe and confident. Now that the caliper's cleaned up, your bracket is clean, the pad spring. I'm gonna apply some silicone based grease to the slider pins and reassemble the caliper. It just presses back together. I'm gonna use my fingers here to push the caliper pistons back into the caliper body to make room for the new pads. Here are the new brake pads. They accidentally sent me two pairs. These are not the original OEM from BMW, but these are about half the price and came from Wunderlich. So I know they'll be fine. They're German made and these are the eco type of brake pad. I think that means that they don't have harmful materials such as asbestos, but not positive on that. They don't list the ingredients. Uh, I have read that some brake pads are made with banana peel now. And by the way, the bike originally came with the Eco brake pads, so I'm not going way out of spec or anything here. 
I forgot to mention that when you're installing the pad spring, it has to be oriented in the right direction. Uh, note the small triangle shaped arrow on it, and it should be pointing forwards toward the front of the bike. Smear some copper based grease onto the pad pin and have that ready. We'll put in the new brake pads and make sure that the tabs on the brake pads point toward the front of the bike and resting on the small shelf. You'll see what I mean when you do this service. And the side of the brake pads with the holes should be pointed toward the rear of the bike as that is where the pad pin will need to pass through. Slide the pad pin in and just finger tight. If you can, try to align the pin so that the hole for the R-clip is facing up. Next, we'll reinstall the brake caliper, starting with sliding the disc in between your newly installed pads. So I'm having difficulty getting the brake caliper back on because there's not enough of a gap between the new pads um, for my disc to go in between. So I'm trying to use this small flat object like this mini miter saw to try to push the pistons back into the caliper and create some space. So I finally get the caliper on. I actually had to loosen the rear brake master cylinder and reduce the pressure on the piston. And when I push the piston back into the caliper, a little bit of brake fluid overflowed, which is what I wanted because that gave me the needed room. For me, this was okay because I had added brake fluid to the reservoir some months back when the brakes were wearing down. Anyhow, let's button everything back together. The torque specs for the caliper mounting bolts are 28 newton meter or roughly 20 and a half foot pounds. Then come back around to the other side and use the punch and hammer again to set the pad pin. And replace the R-clip. So again, this is a fairly straightforward job, not too many surprises. The toughest part was getting the caliper back on and creating enough of a gap between the pads for the disc. Well, good luck and ride safe out there. Thank you for watching. Peace.